Hi, welcome back. In this lesson, we'll talk about the ISC squared and the CAP certification. Stay tuned for more. This lesson is an introduction to the ISC squared certified authorization professional or CAP certification exam. The ISC squared certified authorization professional or CAP certification is maintained by the International Information System Security Certification Consortium, better known as ISC squared. By achieving and maintaining the CAP certification, you will be the expert in risk assessment and security authorization. It allows you to prove mastery of the seven domains of the CAP certification exam. In preparing for the CAP certification, you will develop an understanding of enterprise risk management. You will meet hiring manager expectations and certification requirements, and it will prove your knowledge and technical ability to formalize processes, assess risk, and establish the correct security documentation. You may wonder who can benefit from the CAP certification. There are many people that will benefit from the CAP certification, but some are information technology professionals, information security professionals, information assurance professionals, risk management professionals, system owners wanting knowledge of the RMF or the risk management framework, and authorizing officials and others in leadership roles. There is experience requirements for becoming a CAP certified professionals. To do this, you must pass the CAP certification exam and also prove two years of cumulative work-based experience in one or more of the domains of the ISC squared common body of knowledge or CBK. And we'll look at that later. If you don't have enough experience in the domains of the CBK, you can also become an associate of ISC squared and to do this, you pass the CAP certification exam, but do not meet the experience requirements for the CAP certification. Once you meet those requirements, then you will automatically become CAP certified. There are a number of typical careers that benefit from the CAP certification. These include federal government employees, members of the U.S. military, government contractors, local government employees, private sector employees implementing the RMF, and private sector employees supporting the RMF implementation. As you can see, there are a number of different careers that could be enhanced by your obtaining the CAP certification. There's a number of places you can turn to for community support. Of course, Cyber Recon has the YouTube page. There's also the Facebook group NIST RMF, the website cyberrecon.com where you may be taking this training is a great resource and of course the ISC squared website at iscsquared.org are all great places for community support. There are a lot of facts around the CAP exam. It was introduced in 2005. Initially it was the certification and accreditation professional but when the RMF was released, it became the Certified Accreditation Professional. That way, it maintained the same CAP acronym and individuals that had the CAP certification prior to the changeover to the RMF program were able to maintain that same certification. This certification is one of the required certifications for Department of Defense, Information Assurance, Management Level 1 and Level 2 jobs. On average, according to the ISC squared, the average CAP certified professional salary is $121,510 US dollars. It is the only DOD or Department of Defense 8570 certification that directly aligns with the NIST RMF. This is the normal process and we will go over the process in great detail, but the seven steps of the process are prepare, categorize, select, implement, assess, authorize, and monitor. Within each of the steps, 
there are a number of tasks that must be completed correctly to be able to process an information system, a common control set, or a program through the RMF process. Benefits of becoming certified in the CAP are career advancement, versatile skills, respect, a solid foundation, community of professionals, the ability to reach higher salaries, expanded knowledge, and a stronger skill set. This not only makes you more valuable individually, but it makes you a more valued part of the team or the organization you're supporting and ensures that the risk management tenants of the RMF are implemented correctly throughout the organization in its information systems, its programs, and its common control sets. Being a member of the ISC Squared also has benefits, including a free subscription to the InfoSecurity Professional Magazine, member pricing on ISC Squared events, 50% off official ISC Squared textbooks, deep discounts on industry conferences, expert lab webinars, ability to join or start a local ISC Squared chapter, free online security courses for some subjects, volunteer opportunities, the Safe and Secure Online Program, professional recognition through the ISC Squared Awards Program, a digital badge to promote expertise that can be used on your resume, as well as social networking platforms, and also other ISC Squared membership perks. The digital badge can be placed on your social media pages, your resume, and also a personal websites if you have one. It displays your expertise in the CAP domains. It gives you the ability to share this online and gives you the ability to prove and verify abilities in real time. So we need to know what the CAP exam is really about. The CAP exam covers seven domains. The first domain is Information Security Risk Management Program, which is about 15% of the exam. Categorization of the information system is about 13% of the exam. Selection of security controls, about 13% of the exam. Implementation of security controls, about 15% of the exam. Assessment of security controls, about 14% of the exam. Authorization of the information system, about 14%. Continuous monitoring, about 16%. But I often ask myself when I look at this CAP exam overview, where is that initial step? Where is the prepare step? That's not outlined in the CAP certification exam overview. Don't fear. We'll cover the prepare step at the organization level and the prepare step at the system level in detail in this course. So what you need to know about the CAP exam, here are the basic statistics. There's going to be 125 questions. You'll have three hours to complete the exam. You have to get a minimum score of 700 out of 1,000. And don't be confused, that's not necessarily a 70%. Some questions are weighted differently than others, so it can't be directly converted over to a percentage. The test is available in English at Pearson View Test Centers. As of August 2020, it costs $599 to take the exam, that's US dollars. The CPE requirements to maintain the exam are 60 continuing professional education units, and there's an annual maintenance fee of $125. Although it says annual maintenance fee, that's a three-year period. That's the cycle of the maintenance fee. And if you're a member with multiple certifications, you only pay one AMF fee. For example, if you hold both the CISSP exam and the CAP exam, IAC Squared has stated that you'll only pay one AMF fee. So in closing, in this lesson, we talked about the overview of the CAP exam, who can benefit from the CAP exam, requirements, support, facts, how it ties into the RMF process, the benefits of certification, also the benefits of ISC Squared membership, the badge you can display once you achieve the CAP certification, the exam overview, and statistics around the CAP exam.